Namaskar. Today in the quick review section, the topic is what are over dangers? They are a way for preventive prosthodontics. As a clinician, our main aim should be prevention, preservation of the remaining natural teeth and also the prevention of the residual alveolar bone loss after the teeth are extracted. So let's start. What is our most common treatment plan when we see a few remaining teeth in the oral cavity? We often go for total extraction or complete extraction, which is followed by the fabrication of upper and lower complete dentures. And usually we find that the first denture is usually satisfactory and accepted by the patient. Then the process of resorption of the bone starts. And finally, there is intolerance of the prosthesis due to the resorption, which leads to a compromised or ill-fitting denture. This leads to increase in the resorptive process and also decline in the patient's neuromuscular function and decrease in the proprioceptive response. This is called as dental cripple or failure of the denture. Now, how to prevent this occurrence? The answer is over denture. Overdenture can prevent a patient from entering into an edentulous state. Overdenture is a very important topic from the exam point of view. The undergraduate students often get a short note on overdenture and the postgraduate students may get a long or a short note on overdenture. It is also one of the frequent asked question in the VIVA. So let's begin with its definition. Overdenture is a removable partial denture or a complete denture that covers and rests on one or more remaining natural teeth, the roots of the natural teeth and or dental implants. Now, this overdenture is also called as overlay denture, onlay denture, telescopic denture, hybrid denture or biological denture. Now, how the overdenture they pave the way for preventive prosthodontics. First is they preserve the remaining natural teeth. So this leads to more support, withstand more occlusion load that too in the axial direction. Retention is also improved. Second is preserving the alveolar bone. It decreases the rate of the resorption. So the alveolar bone will exist as a support for the teeth. And third is preserving the proprioception. Retaining the proprioception, it increases in the patient's manipulative skills in handling the denture. Indications. Where we have to give these dentures? First, when the patient is with few natural remaining teeth, when we cannot plan a fixed prosthesis or a removable partial denture, when there is poor prognosis for routine complete denture, or congenital or acquired intraoral defects such as cleft palate, microdontia, oligodontia, mandibular arch where the loss of the bone is more rapid or when the completely maxillary edentulous arch is present opposing the partially edentulous mandibular arch or an intact mandibular dentation. Then also we have to plan an overdenture. Contraindications where we cannot plan an overdenture. First is when the high caries index is present, it will lead to failure of the abutment soon. Second, poor oral hygiene and compromised periodontal tissue, especially around the abutment, that will also lead to failure of the abutment. Third is poor prognosis of the abutment. Very important to forecast the prognosis of the abutment we are using. Reduced inter-arch space, when there is no space for placing the artificial teeth. Undercuts, that will hinder in the path of insertion and removal of the prosthesis. Advantages of an overdenture. The main advantage is preservation of the alveolar bone. It is one of the commonly asked MCQs that the main advantage is preservation of the alveolar bone. So not only the alveolar bone supporting the teeth but the alveolar bone adjacent to the teeth is also preserved. Second is the proprioceptive response. 
it is preserved because of the existence of the periodontal membrane under the overdenture third is improved support and retention as compared to the conventional denture they are more stable and this improves the patient comfort then retention retention can be enhanced with the attachment devices also easy convertibility when all the teeth are lost they can be easily relined or rebased and converted into conventional complete dentures then comes the patient acceptance there is a striking improvement in the function and aesthetics of the patient there is a emotional uplifting because the patient always feels that i have my own teeth drawbacks or the disadvantages of an overdenture the most common problem come across is the carious breakdown of the abutment teeth so the solution to this problem is a good home care guided to the patient frequent recall and fluoride gel applications second is the limited interocclusal space it doesn't allow to place the artificial teeth so we can go for shorter copings followed by the grinding of the teeth third is bulkier than the conventional denture managing the undercuts and the interred space these dentures result in over contoured as compared to the conventional dentures then last is the bony undercuts which are adjacent to the retained teeth this interferes in the path of insertion and removal of the prosthesis we can manage them either by the blockouts of these undercuts or we can shorten the flanges abutment selection a few factors which influence the selection of abutment teeth are first and the most important is the periodontal status ideally the tooth should present with minimal mobility having acceptable bone support and it should be responsive to the periodontal therapy second is the caries activity the abutment should not have a high caries index third is the potential for endodontic treatment the tooth should be responsive to the endodontic treatment there should be no calcified canals or periapical pathologies that can lead to the failure and last is the positional consideration the abutment location so let's understand the abutment location in detail location and distribution of the abutment for the overdenture a very important topic especially the mcqs are framed from this topic so there is first is that the preference for interior teeth over the posterior teeth for the overdenture the second is that two teeth in each quadrant it presents an ideal situation in which the stress is distributed over a rectangular area third is the tripod the tripod is the next most favorable form for support and the stability then the minimal requirement that is use of two teeth in each arch can be the minimal requirement or at least one tooth per quadrant is necessary for placing the overdenture the last point is that the isolated teeth are preferred as compared to the adjacent teeth as the interdental areas are difficult to clean and they are also susceptible to gingivitis now what are the ideal abutments for the maxillary and the mandibular arch in the maxilla the central incisors are considered as ideal for the overdenture abutments because it protects the premaxilla this is one of the mcqs which is asked canines are the next favorable abutments because of the longest roots in the mandible canines and premolars are regarded as the best overdenture abutments this is another mcq which is asked overdentures can be classified based on the support first is the tooth supported overdenture and second is the implant supported overdenture the tooth supported overdentures can be non coping coping or the attachments the coping can be short or long depending on the height the attachments can be rigid or non rigid depending on the resiliency in the tooth supported overdenture first we have the non coping abutments in this most of the teeth they require endodontic therapy or the root canal treatment followed by the amalgam or composite type restoration then the coronal height is reduced to 2 to 3 mm 
the shape is made as convex or dome shaped coronal contour as we can see in the picture the coronal restoration then the ceiling base and the root canal filling second in the tooth supported is the coping uh, abutments that can be short or long what is a coping coping is a cover for the exposed tooth surface in the short coping first the endodontic therapy is done or the root canal treatment is done followed by the tooth reduction of a coronal height of 2 to 3 mm with a chamfer finish line then a dome shaped coping is fabricated and cemented onto the tooth second is the long coping in this the root canal treatment is not required the coronal height is kept up to 5 to 8 mm with a chamfer finish line it results in a long ellipsoid or a thimble coping this type of coping needs more osseous support and also enough interridge distance to place the teeth in the tooth supported the third category is the attachments they are the small precision devices to improve the retention of the denture base two parts are there male and the female they both join to form the assembly of the attachment and improve the retention the attachments may be rigid or non rigid rigid attachment they doesn't allow the movement of the denture base they are fixed they provide adequate retention but they may induce more torque on the abutment in the non rigid attachment they allow some control of the movement so the retention may be less but they induce less torque on the abutment the attachments may be stud attachments the individual attachments which are placed on the teeth or they may be bar attachment which are used for the fixation of the overdenture and splinting of the abutment teeth and third are the magnetic retention in this small magnets are there of cobalt samarium magnet which are placed in the denture bases and the magnet keeper which is placed in the abutment teeth are of palladium cobalt nickel keeper plate now the implant supported over denture the question which is often asked is regarding the minimum requirements and the location first is the mandibular arch minimal two implants should be placed for supporting the over denture there are five positions a to e for placing the implants out of these b and d positions they present the ideal situation for placing the implant supporting the over denture as shown in the picture for the maxillary arch the independent implants are not an option because the bone quality and the force direction are severely compromised so minimal four implants splinted with a bar should be placed for supporting the over denture in the maxillary arch more than two implants in the mandibular arch are placed when first there is a pronounced ridge curvature or there is excessive ridge resorption So that's all for today. I am sure this video will help you to solve the questions related to overdenture. In the coming video, I will be discussing the clinical steps of the abutment preparation and also the fabrication of overdentures. Do not forget to like and share the video. Do subscribe the channel for more learning. Wish you success.